It's finally out in the wild, and although the forums have had mixed reviews, mostly from those who haven't heard it yet, one thing is for sure, the Mojo 2 does a lot more than the original. Learning the ins and outs of new audio gear can be hard, but luckily you're in the right place. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can be a pro on all the gear before it even arrives to your doorstep. Moon Audio gives you the latest audiophile reviews and videos right here. Ultimately, everyone comes to the table with a different perspective, different background, different standards, and finally, and most importantly, different hearing. But don't worry, we're not here to talk about relative sound performance with the original Mojo, or why certain features were included and others not. If you want that info, then you can head over to the written review, which we'll link to. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the basic functions of the new Mojo 2, what they do, and how to get the most out of your listening experience with your new deck. One thing's for sure. And that is that the Mojo 2 has many more features than the original. With the added M or menu button, you have, for better or worse, a slew of new color-coded sound settings to choose from. The problem becomes learning what they mean. So let's keep this simple. Basic controls. Three of the four buttons do the exact same thing as the original Mojo. Power button for on and off, and up and down volume controls. The fourth button accesses a menu setting with the following modes. Blue, now this controls the brightness on the left button for high and low brightness. And it also selects crossfeed mode on the right button with four crossfeed settings, which we'll get into later. Now red accesses the bass frequency at 20 Hertz. Yellow, bass at 125 hertz shelf. Green, treble at three kilohertz shelf. Light blue, treble at 20 kilohertz. And purple activates the lock control. Now, each of these frequency bands can be boosted or minimized with the volume up and down buttons. Want more bass? Boost those frequencies. Or lessen them with the color-coded chart that Ross is gonna pop up here. Now the dB level will rise from red to green to blue to white as you increase or decrease the level. This is a good way to create custom EQs for your specific headphone or setup. Now your headphone is going to determine the best way to use this function. When it comes to sound signatures, something is either warm and musical, neutral and balanced, or forward and analytical. For instance, one of our most musical headphones at Moon Audio is the Dan Clark Ether 2. For this headphone, I'm going to want to boost a number of higher frequencies to get a little more top end and detail, so I would boost the green option in the main menu which adjusts the treble shelf starting at three kilohertz. For a very forward headphone like the HD800S, then you'll wanna boost a low end shelf with the yellow menu option. Basically the 20 hertz bass red and treble blue settings act as fine EQ adjustments and the shelf settings affect a spread of frequencies. The Mojo 2 gives you enough control over the frequency spectrum to boost or cut to get the right sound for your gear and listening preferences. You won't find these kinds of features for anything else under $1,000. Unfortunately, you can only have one EQ setting at a time, and the Mojo 2 will retain your EQ settings each time you turn the DAC on. That is, until you manually change the settings yourself. If the buttons remain untouched for 10 seconds while in the menu mode, 
The DAC will automatically revert to playback mode. If you want to leave the menu mode immediately, simply press and hold the menu button to return to playback mode. One thing to note that with the Mojo 2, when we're talking about volume controls, there's a high gain and a low gain setting. In the regular volume main menu here, you'll see either that you'll have this button on or off. This indicates high gain or low gain. So essentially what you have are two scales here. So when it's off, it's in low gain. So essentially you'll go through all the settings, say at the very bottom, right? Low gain, go through all the settings. Then once we max out on low gain, it automatically switches to high gain. So again, this helps with different headphone impedances, uh, depending on what your specific headphone is rated at. So just keep that in mind. To mute the device, press and hold both the volume up and down buttons simultaneously. If done successfully, the menu button will pulse. Press them again to unmute. Note that the startup time is significantly longer on the Mojo 2 than it was for the Mojo 1. You'll see a series of blinking lights each time you turn on the device. This is normal and it will be ready to use when the buttons show a steady color. One of the Mojo 2's new features is intelligent desktop mode. In this mode, the Mojo 2's menu and power button display purple, or as Cord calls it, magenta. When connected to a power source at all times, now the Mojo 2's battery will not deplete after a full charge and will remain regulated to protect the lifespan of the battery. One thing that will help a bunch, Cord's color progression is red to yellow to green to blue to white. That's the order for low to high. EQ to increase decibels, same order. To decrease decibels, same order. Red is the first step and then it progresses. The same with battery life. Blue is the most charged, red is the least. So if you know that order for Cord's color progression, it should help navigation a ton. You'll have to pay attention to charging as well, since every Mojo user is likely going to use a different charger with a different voltage. Let's pop up a chart here that shows the color coding for the Mojo 2 when it's charging based on the amount of power it's receiving. You'll see that based on the battery status and the number of volts, you'll have room for improvement if your charger isn't up to snuff. But again, notice the color progression. Red is the least amount, while blue and white are the fastest charging speeds. Crossfeed. So one of the most interesting additions to the new Mojo 2 is taken directly from the popular Hugo 2 is the crossfeed mode. It's a setting that's designed to create a more speaker-like soundstage and provide better imaging for your headphones. To access the crossfeed mode, press the menu button once bringing up the first section of the menu which controls the brightness level of the lights and activates crossfeed mode. Note that both lights will be on, signifying the brightness level, and what crossfeed mode setting you're in. Cord has included four modes for crossfeed, and you can toggle through them by pressing the button. Red, minimum crossfeed. Green, moderate. Blue, maximum setting. And unlit is off. Notice again the pattern here of red being the minimal adjustment and blue being the maximum. The crossfeed function works by assessing how much of the mix from one channel to allow to the other, much like your ears work in a room with speakers. You don't have isolated left audio going into your left ear and the same with your right. Your right ear can also hear some of the left channel audio from the speaker and the crossfeed function mimics this sound to provide some excellent spatial acoustics to your listening session. It also applies filters and delays that enhance the overall experience. It's not just about channel mixing, but the delayed response from the source sound to both your ears. If your right ear is turned away from the speaker, you're still gonna hear the sound. It will just be delayed and softer than what you will hear in your left ear. Higher crossfeed offers more separation. 
I find personally it's not a setting you just leave on. I have to adjust crossfeed settings based on albums a lot of the time since they're all mixed differently. Also, it can be used to center sound stages if instrumentation is panned hard left or right. A lot of the early Beatles stereo recordings are mixed this way, and it can provide a more blended sound like more contemporary recordings. You'll have to toggle through the settings to see what you prefer, if anything at all. Poly users, don't worry. The Mojo 2 is compatible with the PolyStreamer as expected. However, please note that you will have to update the Poly to the latest firmware version that helps with the Mojo 2 compatibility. If you have any questions about setting up your Poly with your Cord Mojo 2, leave a comment and we'll be more than happy to help you. Lockdown mode. The bad thing about buttons is that they can get pressed when you don't want them to. Especially in a portable scenario where you are carrying the device around in a bag where other items can unintentionally press the controls. Best case scenario, nothing happens. Worst case scenario, you max out your volume, destroying your gear or worse, your hearing. Core takes this serious issue and comes up with a simple solution, button lock. To activate button lock, press the menu button six times until the menu button is purple or magenta. Then simultaneously press the volume up and down buttons once until all three buttons are magenta. After a couple of seconds, the colors will revert to the volume control, but the menu button will remain purple to indicate that the Mojo 2 is still in lockdown mode. In button lock mode, a single press of the menu button returns to the button lock menu. Simply simultaneously press the volume up and down buttons again to deactivate the mode and return to the regular mode. To restore your Mojo 2 to factory settings, simply press both the volume up and down buttons at the same time from either the DSP menu or the crossfeed menu mode. This will reset all DSP, crossfeed, and EQ settings that you would set. The power button also serves dual purpose in identifying the sample rate information of the track you are listening to. Much like the already established pattern of the color scheme implemented by the Mojo, the lowest sample rate begins with red and moves upward to yellow, green, blue, purple, and white as the sample rate gets higher. So the Mojo 2 DAC can also be used as a designated USB DAC. Uh, you can connect it via USB-C or micro USB. Cord makes it very clear that audio quality is not different between the two connections. So for instance here, we have a Silver Dragon USB-C cable connected to the Estelle & Kern SR25 Mark II. So essentially what you would do is go into the settings Scroll down till you see USB mode, and then you would select DAC input. So that way your audio output would come through the Mojo 2 rather than the SR25. This is just a general walkthrough of the controls and functions of the new Mojo 2. We have lots more information included in the written review and the Mojo 2 user guide, which we've developed here at Moon Audio. We'll link to both of those below. Be sure to check out Drew's full video review of the Mojo 2 with his sound impressions and overview. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and remember to subscribe so you don't miss our videos and reviews. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and as always, thanks for watching.